So I saw something in the Washington Post today. Anyone who reads more than 50 books in 2023 is in the 99th percentile. So, you know, I'm a winner. I read 62 books in 2023. Here are all the books I read in 2023 as the founder and curator of a queer book subscription box. Not all of these are queer, and I'll try to point out the ones that are and the ones that aren't. So the first book that I read is Fluke it's by Christopher Moore. I'm pretty sure this was actually a gift from my partner. He recommended it to me. It's weird, and I think that's why he recommended it, because I love weird. It was kind of problematic, and uh, it's been like 15 years since he read it, so he had no idea. But I think it solidified me as the book recommender in the family. Second book, The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. She is like my favorite author of all time now. I love this book. It's about the beauty of reading and books and family and second chances. And there's just so much goodness and it's pretty fast paced. She also wrote Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which some people consider to be a LGBTQ book. I personally don't. The characters who are queer come in pretty late in the book and aren't main characters, even though they, they're very significant to the plot. I probably won't put it in a box, even though it's like my favorite book of all time. Maybe someday. Then we have A Half-Built Garden by Ruthanna Emrys. I loved the premise of this book. It's science fiction, it's a first contact with alien story, which I really love, but um, I didn't really connect with this. I'll say this. I'm really bad at talking about books that I don't like because I feel like when I don't like a book, I don't think that the book is bad necessarily unless there's something like super problematic about it. But I think I just haven't, I didn't find the book or the book didn't find me in the right time. So usually I just tell myself that this isn't the point in my life where I'm going to enjoy this book and I might try again later. I think I just didn't connect with her writing style at this point in my life, but... Other people seem to really have enjoyed it, so. Next, we have Legend Born by Tracy Dion. Uh, I read this as an audiobook. It was recommended by a friend, and I really liked it. This isn't a queer book. Actually, that's a lie. The best friend of the main character is queer. It was fun read. Next, we have Even Though I Knew the End by C.L. Polk. This is a book that I got at uh, Glad Day. It's the queer bookstore in Toronto. I just picked it off the shelf. Didn't really know anything about it. It's a pretty fast-paced, short read, sapphic fantasy mystery. It's really good. Probably won't be in a box someday because it's more romance, but I did enjoy it and would recommend it. Next we have I Hear You by Michael Sorensen, which is a nonfiction book. I did read quite a few nonfiction books this year. Some of them are focused on like, relationships and self-help. This was a really good one. Next, I read Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, which was recommended by a family member. I don't know if I really want to talk about that one because it's really problematic. <laughs> All right, then we have another one by Gabrielle Seven, Young Jane Young. Again, brilliant. Then we have An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green, which is actually the January book of Queerly Curated. I read this originally as an audiobook and absolutely loved it. There is a sequel as well, so that will probably be in a box coming soon. Next was Now Is Not the Time to Panic by Kevin Wilson. This book made me fall in love with his writing. It's not LGBTQ, but I do really enjoy his writing style. Next, I read Lost in the Moment and Found, which is the eighth book in the Wayward Children series by Sean and McGuire. I don't remember much about this one. I read 62 books, and it's hard to keep track of them all. I was told that you don't have to read these books in order, so I started with the eighth one because I saw it at the library and was intrigued. Also support your local libraries. This is another one that I didn't really enjoy. I think it didn't find me in the right time of my life. So I did end up reading the first one just to see if that sort of like, <laughs> maybe it was because I read the eighth one and not the first one first, but I didn't really like the first one either. So sorry. This is a queer book. I know that the first book does have a sexual representation and from what I've seen is positive asexual representation, but I think the style of writing was just not for me. Okay, so now we're in March. This is March 1st. I finished uh, the sequel to An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green, A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor. Brilliant. It's amazing. The main character is bisexual. There's really great re bisexual representation in these books. Hank Green is also out as bi, so it's written by a bisexual author. These are science fiction, first contact with aliens, mystery, commentary about fame and power and queerness and humanity. So many sociological topics, and he does them really, really well. It's also really humorous and just entertaining and brilliant. Every time my partner talks talks about AI, artificial intelligence, and new technologies. I always tell him to read these books. I think that they're super relevant in things that are going on in our society and politically. 
with policy, with technology. It really gets you thinking about everything that's going on right now. I think it's super relevant and entertaining and awesome. Next, I have a book that I really enjoyed and then learned was by a problematic author. So I'm not going to talk about that one. Next is Tin Man by Sarah Winman. I actually saw this at the library. I didn't realize it was an LGBTQ book. I thought the cover was really pretty and I just took it home, but it does have queer representation. It's really beautifully written. It's a story about friendship and family and probably a lot of other things that I don't remember. Probably won't be in a box someday, but you should check it out. Even though Queerly Curated doesn't usually include romance in the boxes, I personally read a lot of romance, especially queer romance. The next book I read was Mistakes Were Made by Meryl Wilsner. This was spicier than I thought it was going to be. It's very good. Next, I have The Chilling Effect by Valerie Valdez. I read this as an audiobook. It's about cats in space. What could be better? I think this one I would have to read as a physical book too. I didn't like it. Okay, now we're getting towards the end of March. We've got The Ingenue by Rachel Kipelke Dale. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. This one also isn't LGBTQ, but I absolutely loved it. It centers around like a musical prodigy. It deals with heavy topics such as sexual assault. It's a mystery thriller. I really liked it. And we have three more books by an author who came to learn was problematic. All right, then we have True Biz by Sarah Novick. This is a book with LGBTQ representation. It also has deaf representation and is by a deaf author. I really liked this one. I studied sign language and knew a lot of people in the deaf community. Sarah's super awesome and really nice and you should read her books. All right, then we have another one by Kevin Wilson, Tunneling to the Center of the Earth. This is a collection of short stories, which I don't read often, but really enjoyed this one. Also not LGBTQ. Then we have Outlawed by Anna North. I really enjoyed this one. I think this is brilliant. It's a Western, but with very feminist topics. Also, there is a non-binary character. I think this one's really fun and talks about things that are really important and I would highly recommend. Okay, now we're getting into June. We have Survive the Dome by Kasoko Jackson. This is LGBTQ representation, also deals with racism and police brutality in the United States. It's science fiction, but has a lot of really relevant, important themes. I read this as an audiobook. All right, then we have Pieces of Blue by Holly Goldberg Sloan. This I just saw at the library and thought it sounded intriguing and took it home. This is not LGBTQ. was just looking for more to read and it was all right. Then we have Written in the Stars by Alexandria Bellaflor. This is another sapphic romance. It's very cute. You should check it out. All right. Then we have Devil's Chew Toy by Rob Olsler. This I read as an audiobook. It has LGBTQ representation. I think it tries to approach some sensitive topics, and I didn't appreciate the way he approaches those topics, such as policing in the United States. I think the author had a responsibility to talk about those things a little better. But if you're looking for a fun mystery that's queer. Okay, then we have I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. I absolutely love this one. I cried a lot. There's so many good quotes. It's so quotable. I think it's just like, it's just a beautiful story. And this one will definitely be in a box at some point. Can look forward to that. All right, now we're mid-July. We have We Deserve Monuments by Jas Hammonds. This is a young adult uh, novel dealing with really heavy topics like grief, generational trauma, family, familial trauma. I had a lot of rants when I read this one. Um, my partner had a lot to listen to. Yet another by uh, an author who I've since learned is problematic. Then we have Old Enough by Haley Jacobson. This is definitely a five-star read. I personally am reading a lot of feedback on this book. It starts off being very like, this is gonna be a woke book and you should know that. And I think that's kind of cringy, but when you get into even just the second chapter, it's brilliant and incredible. And I think everyone should read this book. It deals with some heavy topics, uh, specifically sexual assault, and I think this is a really important story and it's really well told. Next we have A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. This is the first in the Monk and Robot series. It's a very philosophical book. It does have LGBTQ representation. The main character is non-binary. It's a very peaceful science fiction futuristic story. I would recommend it. It'll probably be in a box. Next we have a collection of short stories by Nino Cipri. It's called Homesick. This is very weird, and I love weird. It was brilliant, and I loved it. I think Nino Cipri is one of my favorite authors. All right, now we're getting into September. 
All right, we have Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Fraser. I read this as an audiobook. This one is also very weird. Love weird. This is weirder than I thought it was going to be. It's not gonna be in a queerly curated box, but I think you have to check it out for yourself. I don't know if I would recommend it to people, but if you wanna know why I think it's weird, you're just gonna have to find out for yourself. Then we have Big Swiss by Jen Began. Uh, I read this as an audiobook as well. At this point, uh, I was going through a weird phase. I think at this point in the year, I was searching for books that were similar to Vladimir by Julia May Jones, which is not a queer book, but a book that I really enjoyed. Vladimir deals with obsession and has one of the best examples of unreliable narrators that I've read in a really long time. So I think I was looking for something like that um, with Pizza Girl and Big Swiss. They both deal with this sort of like obsessive relationships. How should I describe Big Swiss? Big Swiss is super bizarre. I want to recommend it, but I'm not <laughs> sure I can. I read this as an audiobook and I think the audiobook production is done really well. While I was reading this book, I was sending my partner audio messages of just me ranting about what was happening. I was giving like play-by-plays of the plot of this book. I talk about books a lot. Usually he's not really very entertained. This one was very amusing to him. So then we have Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. This is one of my favorite books of 2023. This is romance, so you're not going to see it in really curated, but... I absolutely fell in love with this one. I've seen the movie like several times now. It's a lot spicier than I thought it was gonna be. It's so cute, highly recommend. Then we have 30 Names of Night by Zayn Jukadar. This book has LGBTQ representation. The main character is trans. It also has Syrian American representation. The main themes focus around the characters, transness and queerness and embracing ourselves authentically. It also deals with uh, immigration, racism, some really heavy topics. This is beautifully written. Then I went through a phase of reading some gay romance audiobooks. I'm not going to talk about all of those. If people want to know what I read and what I think about them, let me know in the comments and I'll do a video about it. Next, we have The Celebrants by Stephen Rowley. This is a really good book. It talks about some really heavy philosophical topics like grief and death. I think the author does a really good job being sensitive, but also entertaining and humorous. This is a really well-written story. Next, we have A Land of Milk and Honey by C. Pam Zang. This is a dystopian literary fiction. Some of the main themes are power, relationships, food, pleasure, desire, longing, sex. Here's another one by Meryl Wilsner, a sapphic romance. It came out this year called Cleat Cute. All right, now we have another nonfiction. It's called The Art of Limbromacy by Josh Cook, who is a bookseller, Hoarder Square Books. This talks about reading and selling books in a way that is ethical. This has really helped me as somebody who works in the literary industry, selling books in a subscription box. It talks about how the literary industry is structured, how it works. I mean, on the back of the book, I have it. The Art of Limbromacy. I'm just gonna read the back of this. If books are important to you because you're a reader or a writer, then how books are sold should be important to you as well. If it matters to you that your vegetables are organic, your clothes made without child labor, your beer brewed without a culture of misogyny, then it should matter how books are made and sold to you. And that's exactly what I've gotten out of this book. How books are sold and how books should be sold how to support booksellers, small businesses in the literary industry, avoiding big companies like Amazon and learning how Amazon is so destructive to small businesses, especially literary small businesses and the literary industry as a whole. It's very important. Good stuff. Okay, now we have Exile from Eden or After the Hole by Andrew Smith. This is the second book in a series. The first one is Grasshopper Jungle. This is a book with LGBTQ representation, but one that I can't recommend because of how weird it is, but I absolutely loved how weird it is. Maybe I'll do another video talking about it because I think it's great. All right, now we have Atomic Habit by James Clear. This is a nonfiction I read as an audiobook for people who are interested in building good habits, breaking bad habits, supporting a healthy lifestyle. This is definitely a really good read for them. The very last book that I read in 2023 was A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers, which is the second book in the Monk and Robot series. I think the second book really solidified my love for this series. The first one, I liked it, but I wasn't so sure. The second one really wraps the story up, really made me fall more for the characters, expands on some of the philosophical topics that the first one talks about, and goes into some new ones. It's just a very peaceful story. It was a good one to finish the year with. And that's it. Do you think 62 is a lot? Books, no. Bodies, yes. <laughs>